Okay, so we're on to the auto accompanist um, uh, exercise, which is a challenge, it says with an exclamation mark. Um, and in fact, I'm not sure whether I should perhaps have given a little bit more uh, <coughs> guidance in the uh, in this. Uh, a lot of people seem to have found it a little bit tough. Um, but anyway, um, I, I think I think if I go through it, it'll it'll actually be um, fairly fairly straightforward. Um, and again, reinforce some of the ideas that we've already looked at. So. It says, build your own auto accompanist. Uh, the instrument is designed to play a concordant note uh, for each diatonic note, i.e. each white note, um, from C2 to C3. So that's the C below middle C to middle C. Um, so it says, download the patch, AA Max patch, uh, which we have done, um, and make sure you understand how it works. So we'll have a look. Um, there's note in there. Uh, we'll look in look at uh, the note in and note out objects in a minute when we have a look at MIDI. Um, but basically that should uh, accept a, um, a, a sound from your MIDI keyboard. Uh, which I haven't actually got. Uh, if I double click on the note in object um, then it gives me a list of all the devices which are available to Max MSP. Um, and when I plugged in my keyboard uh, it would have come up with key station port 1. Um, so I want to choose that. In fact, if I leave it on all devices by channel, it'll, it'll recognise it anyway, but I'll, I'll uh, click on that one to uh, to accept data from there. Um, strip note, will, we won't worry about for now. Um, but the K slider here is uh, essentially a um, an XY slider. Uh, in terms of being uh, recognizing data both horizontally and vertically um, if I if I click on any one of those notes you'll notice that uh, well you'll hear something hopefully let's turn this up a little bit uh, um, oh yeah it's quiet at the moment because uh, obviously horizontally it gives us keys on the keyboard um, but vertically it gives us uh, velocity so if I if I click at the bottom of the keyboard uh, it'll be quiet if I click further up then it will give me a, uh, a louder sound for that. So it measures ver uh, velocity vertically and notice that out of this, just as with the note in um, <coughs> outlets, you get uh, the note number coming out of the left hand side and the velocity coming out of the right hand side. And those both go into make note um, which will give me um, a, an, a starting velocity of 100, although that's always being overwritten by whatever comes in on the right hand side, um, and a duration of 500 milliseconds, and then that goes into note out, which is being sent to my AUDLS synth, as you will hopefully now be familiar with. Um, so if I click on the keyboard, if I press a button on the keyboard, it will um, it will play those notes that I want it to. Cluttered on my desk at the moment. Okay. Right. Um, so what do we want to do? Uh, <clears throat> next we want to use a select object to recognise the MIDI note number for each diatonic note of the C2 to C3 scale. You will need to know the MIDI value for each of these notes. Use the keyboard below to help you with this. So, uh, we need the note C2, which is this one. Um, and that will be the number 48. And then we need the next white note, which is D2. Um, so that one will be 50. And then E2 will be 52, F2 will be 53, and so on, up to C3, which will be 60. So we need a select object to recognize the note values coming from here. Um, and, uh, and then obviously the, the, next, the, uh, the next step will well, we, we, we can assume it will do something with that. So, um, select. Well, I could use just SEL. You might remember from the last uh, uh, last video I said that SEL will work as um, select as well. So we want 48, 50, 52, 53, 55, 57, 59, and 60. Um, and if I put little... Um, buttons beneath those, or at least some of them, you'll be able to see that those are being triggered by each individual note as we press them. So is a, is another another use for the select object. And so on. 
blah blah blah. I shan't bother to do all of them, but you'll be able to see. If I press this uh, C below middle C, um, then it gives me a uh, sorry about the squeak. Um, it gives me uh, the, a, a bang out of the first outlet. If I press D, it gives me a bang out of the second outlet, and so on. Um, and it will do that for all the notes up to middle C. I'm going to get rid of this because I don't need this anymore. Um, <clears throat> so if we uh, move to the next step, it says, actually I'll put it there, um, using three message boxes and referring to the exercise above, so the previous exercise, create message boxes that would play the following chords. We want C3, E3, G3 and C4. Um, so I'll need message box for that. And um, we need to refer to this uh, this um, uh, this uh, keyboard again. So the C3 will mean we want the note 60. Um, then E3 will be 64. G3 will be 67. And C above middle C will be 72. And hopefully you will already have seen that if I want to play a chord, which I've got here, then I've got a problem here because I need something else in here uh, in order to make those play independently as opposed to uh, them being recognised as, well, for example, note number and velocity and um, it would be duration in, in this case because the three first items would be distributed throughout the make note object if I were to do that. So I need commas in order to separate them into independent messages which come out in very, very quick succession. So you won't hear them coming out separately, but they do in fact come out separately which enables us to hear a chord. So if I connect that to make note and lock the patch, then marvellous, we get a chord of C. <clears throat> so we need to do the same thing with the other chords as well. So D3 will be 62, uh, 6, 60, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, F3 will be 65, uh, G3 will be 67, and B3 will be 71. I might have, might have said that wrong a minute ago. That should be give us a G7 chord. So we'll connect that up and play it. Marvellous. And then finally, we want an F chord, which will be in second inversion, for those of you who are familiar with such terms. And this will be uh, 60, comma, oops, yes, yeah, 65 for F, and then 69 for A, and then 72 again for C. <clears throat> okay, so we've got C major, G7, and a F chord. And then, uh, well, connect these to the make note object, which we've done. And then it says, connect the patch so that notes C2, E2, G2, and C3 trigger chord A. So this is chord A. Um, and we want C2, so this is why we've got the select object here. I need to unlock the patch again. Um, C2 is, is here, and we want that one to trigger this chord, so we make it trigger that chord. E2 is this one, so we make it trigger this chord again. G triggers this one again, and C triggers this one yet again. Um, notice, remember, that, that we have um, an additional outlet of select, which is, as you can see from the little um, help uh, whatnot, um, it says input if input doesn't match, so that's what we... Uh, are using to, well, we, we ignore that for the time being. Uh, notes D2, F2 and B2 trigger chord B. So we have D2, which triggers this one, F2, which triggers this one, and then B2, which triggers that one, and then we have one note which triggers the F chord. <coughs> okay, and I think that's probably all we have to do. Yes, it is. So now, when I lock the patch, um, our bottom C triggers that chord. D, E, F, and so on. So you can, you can um, just by means, again, of using a fairly simple um, uh, object, or a series of simple objects, you can uh, do potentially musically useful things. Okay, they're not thrilling. Um, but obviously you can you can do more complex things with that, getting the select object to uh, to trigger certain events 
under certain circumstances which could be quite useful to you.